Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to do a really um, broad and brief overview of the evolution of the atomic model. So thinking about um, how the, our understanding of the atom has changed over time. Um, we're going to go through each model in more detail um, as we, we go through, but this is just to kind of give you the, the, the heads up of the different stages that our ideas have been through um, through history. Okay, so some of the, the, the people that we're going to look through, look at, we're going to look at Democritus, Dalton, Thomson, Rutherford, and Bohr. Okay, they're the five kind of main sort of stages that we're going to look at. Okay, so let's start with Democritus, our first port of call. Okay, so we're thinking Democritus. So we're thinking around about 400 BC. Okay, so his idea, I'm just going to be really simple. Okay, it's just a fairly plain sort of circle. Okay. All right, so he developed or kind of proposed this concept of atomos that we've looked at before, or this idea that of something being indivisible or uncuttable or cannot be cut. Okay, that eventually if you take a piece of paper or something like it, I don't, I don't imagine they had paper back then, but never mind, um, that and eventually you broke it down, for the, you know, the, the furthest that it could go, that you would take it down to tiny little particles of paper, you know, that it was at, the, at, at, it, it was at its essence that the sub, a substance was the same all the way down to that, that same, that's that tiny, you know, invisible level. Okay, uh, but eventually you get to a point that cannot be cut anymore. Okay, and that he called that point atomos. Okay, so that is, he took this concept of the four elements that make up all matter being earth, air, fire, and water, and decided that, that you know, and, and proposed this idea that that was no longer logical anymore. Unfortunately, um, some of the other philosophers of his day were more famous with more and more power and more well regarded and well accepted, and they didn't like his idea, and so Democritus, his idea didn't, didn't take hold. Um, eventually it started to work its way back around, but unfortunately it took far too long. They stuck with old ideas for much longer than they should have. But hey, that was the ancient Greeks for you. Okay, and so then we get to a man named Dalton. Okay, and so we're thinking around about 1800 in, in broad terms. Okay, so up until this point, so that huge amounts of change in our scientific understanding have, have taken place. Okay, and so we've got, we've developed our theories of chemistry, we've started to understand science as a, a field that, of experimentation and of, of evidence that we can carry out experiments and we can learn from those, rather than the way that ancient Greeks did things with just thought, you know, they thought and, and developed ideas about things. Okay, and so, um, you know, around about the time of, the, just after the French Revolution and some of the pioneers of chemistry, um, developing concepts of elements and compounds and discovering new substances. And so then Dalton took, used all of that, um, that knowledge and that expertise to then propose his model of the atom, okay? That we would often call it the billiard ball model. Okay, so if you imagine that this is, you know, like a, like a pool ball or a billiard ball that we would use, this kind of, this sphere of, of unbreakableness. Okay, and so um, he proposed kind of four ideas. At atoms of an element are all alike, um, but different to other elements. Okay, um, so that... Atoms of or carbon are all the same as one another, but they're different to atoms of oxygen, for example. His further ideas were that atoms uh, cannot be created or destroyed. They combine in simple whole ratios to form um, compounds. And that they are rearranged in chemical reactions. Okay, so this was kind of the key ideas of his theory. All right, so, so he was proposing that, that 
the, the different elements that they knew existed by this point all consisted of different types of atoms, that the atoms of the same element were all alike, but different to the others, and they were alike in all sorts of respects, um, that all matter was made of these atoms, which couldn't be created or destroyed, um, that they could be combined in simple ratios to form compounds, and then rearranged in chemical reactions. Okay, and so this idea persisted for almost 100 years until we then get to Thomson. Okay, so we get to J, a man named J.J. Thompson in the late 1800s. Okay, so electricity was a concept that had been around, um, that had been invented since Dalton was, was proposing his ideas, and, and in, indeed long after, after Dalton had actually died. Um, and so we get to Thompson who was conducting experiments using electricity, and so um, he discovered the electron. Okay, but so then the only way that he could account for um, the existence of the electron inside the atom was to say, okay, well, so electrons were contained inside the atom and the rest of the atom was positively charged to balance it out. Okay, so we call his the plum pudding model. Um, was something of being English at that sort of time. That you, perhaps you might visualise it a bit more like a chocolate chip cookie. It's perhaps a bit more relevant to us in our day and age. Okay, that the electrons are the plums or the chocolate chips, and the rest of the dough is positively charged, which makes up the rest of the atom. Okay, so we've got um, negative, negatively charged electrons and positive dough. Okay, so they were kind of the key features of his model. Okay, and then that lasted for about another 15 years or so. Okay, so then we come to Rutherford. Um, in a, a man named Ernest Rutherford, so he was a New Zealand physicist working, at West, working in London, and around 1911 then um, helped to develop a new model of the atom, which we, we see over here. Um, you, he used, conducted an experiment, important experiment using gold foil that then demonstrated the existence of the nucleus at the centre of the atom, that most of the atom is actually empty space, but that most of the mass of the atom is concentrated right in the middle, um, has most of the mass and it has a positive charge. Okay, and then in order to then explain how the electrons fit in, he proposed that the electrons then orbited around the outside of this nucleus and there was plenty of empty space in between. Now his model only really stuck around for about another two years before it was kind of tweaked by a colleague of his named Niels Bohr. Okay, so what we have here <coughs> is the model proposed by a man named Niels Bohr. Okay, so he worked quite closely with Rutherford that they, they weren't kind of competitors or, or strangers to one another. But so Bohr then tweaked um, Rutherford's model, which still included the nucleus at the center, but rather than the electrons all orbiting at the, the same kind of, the same way around, way around, that then he proposed that the electrons orbit in fixed kind of energy levels or energy shells. So looking at our model over here, that's what the dotted lines represent. That we have our nucleus at the centre and that we then we're able to, to demonstrate protons and neutrons inside there, um, and that these electrons orbit in these shells. So that based on what you can see is that we, we um, often nickname it to be the planetary or solar system model of the, the atom. You know, that we have the sun and we've got planets orbiting at fixed orbits around it. You know, we always know where Mercury or Earth or Venus is going to be around the sun at any given moment. So the orbit is fixed, but then, then they start closer to the centre and work their way out. And then each of these shells or, or energy levels has a, a certain number of electrons that it can fit. And then once it needs, once it is full, then we need to move to the next shell and the next shell. Okay, so you can see that over the course of these different models of the atom, we've started from the simple kind of uncrackable sphere and moved our way up in complexity and depth of our understanding. Um, but as we've added new knowledge. Um, we will, so I will in, in future videos kind of unpack each model and each experiment with a little bit more detail, um, but that just kind of gives you an overview of each of those models. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.